Riley Dempsey. I'm the program director at the headquarters of Srop Mist International in Cambridge. So I do live in the UK, but as you may be able to tell from my accent, um, I come from America originally. Um, as far as my age, um, <laughs> let's just say that when I was born, the Bee Gees were very hip and trendy. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> We wanted to speak about our project in Moldova today because when we truly take a life course approach, we not only recognize the importance of formal and non-formal education in various age groups, but also to recognize the importance, sometimes critical, of education for a woman or a young girl at a particular time in her life, meaning the situation that she's in, the experiences that she's having, the context and the environment around her. And that's a life course approach, just as much as from cradle to grave, as we said in the beginning. So we've learned the importance of education for younger women in smaller groups to find their decision-making skills and to become leaders as young as six years of age. We've learned the importance of um, listening to teenagers. Um, uh, because we know they'll be making change and I think we often say that they're the leaders of tomorrow and I think perhaps we've seen today that actually they're the leaders of today. Um, we've learned about the importance of education for 16 to 25 year old young women as they embark on becoming grown adults and they take on jobs and they become responsible citizens of the world. We've learned the importance of education for women aged 25 to 59 when they have financial responsibilities and need to take on a different role in their life. And we've just heard the importance of education for women aged 60 plus who may have become marginalized or ostracized in their society and education can be a tool to overcome. So the women we're talking about in Moldova are young women. They tend to be aged 14 to 19 as our target group. And because of the economic, social, political, and uh, transitional state of Moldova, these women are extremely vulnerable to lots of things, particularly human trafficking, um, but they're vulnerable for all sorts of very poor socioeconomic outcomes. So we're using formal and non-formal education for these girls as a tool to prevent violence against women and girls. Our program works through orphanages in Moldova. These girls are not necessarily orphans, but because of the financial realities of the situation of Moldova, their parents have left the country to try and earn money elsewhere. And these girls are left alone. And they're vulnerable, and they're scared. And they're in an orphanage with lots of other girls and boys. Um, and many of these girls, when they leave the orphanage, have no support, no life skills, no chance of viable employment, and uh, a not insignificant number of these girls think that entering into the commercial sex industry is actually a viable form of employment. So the Soroptimist Club go into this school, and they roll out a program of primarily life skills. So it's formal and it's non-formal. It's formal because it's within this set orphanage, orphanage's setting. Um, but it's also non-formal because we're, we're teaching life skills, employment skills, and, and other support. And that includes career guidance, health care, dealing with violence at home, communication, and teaching them about public offices and the legislative process within Moldova. It also includes higher education support, such as career counseling. They're given a housing allowance during education so that they have a safe place to live. Uh, mentoring and support from social assistance. We also have a very important project in Sierra Leone where we recognize that being in a post-conflict situation is also a particular point in a woman's life where she may need education, formal and non-formal, to overcome the, the tragedy in her life. So there we are protecting women and girls after they've been affected by violence. In that program, we're working to improve the health and life chances of deprived women and children living in poverty, promoting stability and self-reliance in a post-conflict society, providing education, training, small business, and life skills support to enable families to become self-sufficient and support their children, building the capacity of local childcare professionals and creating models of excellence that can be shared with other countries, and enabling more children to grow up in a caring family. 
our work in Sierra Leone um, primarily targets young women uh, who are also mothers, and these are also teenagers, um, who may be on the streets or have been kicked out of their homes um, and are really living in a very dire situation that are brought to the attention of our partner organization, Hope and Homes for Children in Sierra Leone, um, through various community members. Um, and in that particular project, they also recognize the importance of educating the community around these young women and girls. So it's not just the target audience, but also working within a larger community to enable opportunities for these women, mothers, to, to be able to reintegrate and to use the skills and confidence that we hope we give them through our programs. So I hope I've shown just a few small <coughs> examples of how the life course approach encompasses not only various times in our life, whether it be the Bee Gees or Queen Elizabeth, um, <laughs> but it can also encompass various situations in facing women and girls throughout various times in their life. Thank you.